What are you doing? Texting. Get out of the way. Kind of busy. I don't care. No, you can, you, you can wait. I'm watching TV. You can text somewhere else. Get out of the way. Move. Remove thine body from the obstruction which is created between me and the TV. We're trying to watch TV and you're obstructing my view. Okay. I'm your host, Mike Hill. DIY Classic. Now, if you don't want to play, just go to Q and then change the view of it. Well, it's like a film world. Today, our subject is free filmmaking soft. We are doing an alien blaster effect inside of Blender. Real quick before I get started, I have an announcement for you guys. I'm going really hard and heavy in getting the Google Plus community page going. I've had it for a little while, but it hasn't had a whole lot of success, but I've never really advertised it before. So I'm advertising it now. I want a great place for all of you Film World fans and me to communicate. Um, so go in the, um, in the description below, there is a link, a simple link. You click it once, you're at the community page, then hit you know, you know, join the community and start posting. That's all it is. And I want this to be a really great place for Film World fans to share links to articles, talk about stuff they like, make a poll to ask, you know, what, for instance, what maybe your favorite camera is, or maybe your favorite DSLR lens. I mean, just a really great place for all Film World fans and me to communicate together. So I, I really want to be posting a lot on there and I really want to see you guys posting a lot on there so go into the to the link in the description below and join the community and start talking okay so let's go ahead and get into the effect as you probably guessed by now this is the effect okay so if you're a fan of the show you may have kind of scratched your head and gone um, isn't that basically the same effect as the lightsaber in Blender or the Cyclops Optic Blast in Blender that we did basically twice? And the answer is, yeah, it really is. Um, so why would I make a whole new episode on how to do the same effect for a third time? Well, the reason is the Cyclops episode, there are two reasons. The Cyclops episode I did because there was a little bit more to it, like the glare on the face and all that kind of stuff. So that definitely did deserve its own episode. But this one, it pretty much is the same as a lightsaber. So you can definitely use this when it comes to making a lightsaber. Okay, what's different about it though? What makes this worth its own episode? I figured out a much better and easier way to make, to animate the actual effect. As you may remember with the lightsaber and Cyclops optic blast effect episode, I used a 3D plane inside of the 3D viewport. This was okay and it got the job done, but it wasn't very user friendly. Well, how have I improved it? We're using the mask editor. That's right, we're making a mask and we're able to animate the mask just the same way as you would in After Effects or HitFilm. So, you can do this effect as easily and user friendly in Blender now as you would in After Effects or HitFilm. In fact, I think it might even be easier. Okay, the second reason is because it was a viewer request as you can see from this comment here. So thank you for sending in that uh, viewer request and <laughs> I really hope you like this episode. And uh, there are a few other things that go into making uh, the Alien Blast specifically that we will go over. All right, so let's jump into Blender. Okay. So, the finished shot looks like this. Alright, now this 
is the composite and as you can see it's really really simple and easy to do and real quick just so you have an idea of what I was talking about with the mask system that's fully animatable all within the mask system alright so let's go ahead and get into this now the first thing you gotta do of course is open up a new version of a uh, new blender alright now I am running this off of a file not the installed version because for some reason videos will not work and yes I am using Fedora now I was not last time I did a video so and I am really liking Fedora alright so first things first let's change our you know settings here it is 1080 by uh, 1920 by 1080 but the FPS for me is 23.98 alright I need it to export as H.264 and the encoding needs to be MP4 and an MP oh, actually that doesn't matter we don't need that because blender doesn't work very good with sound within the node compositor alright bitrate uh, we can just go ahead and leave it anywhere because for just tutorial purposes you will definitely want higher than this otherwise it'll really look bad alright so first things first um, we are not using anything within the 3d viewport so we don't need any of that alright now go to the node compositor hit N to uh, close that panel alright and we're going to change this to scene mode down here we have material mode scene mode and texture mode we need it in scene mode and then we hit use nodes this is a uh, this is what's going to allow us to composite a visual effects shot alright so we can just hit X to delete that render layers uh, node because we do not need render layers with this effect it is render layer node effect list it, it has no need for a render layer node alright so let's move this over here in shift A we're going to out, get an output node which is the viewer so that we can see it in the backdrop because he has selected backdrop so we can see the background of it we will see it in the background alright so first things first let's add our footage input image and open and that's the one I need and the frames is 111 and I do need it to start on frame 1 and it does not need to be offset at all so that's all good alright and we'll plug this into the composite node hit shift and drag with the uh, right button or left button in order to move that right button moves that okay so I'm going to scale down the image in the background so I can see it better something like 0.8 okay now first things first let's go ahead and make our actual blast inside of the mask editor now the frame doesn't really matter well but what the heck we'll go ahead and put it at the actual frame all right so uh, oh yeah that's right my end <laughs> need to set this to the proper one it is 111 so that's all that's needed let's try 99 there we go that's where we're pretty much going to need the first blast now if I open up this and go to playback speed slower do you see when I fire see how there's a little glow do it again see how there's a little glow before it fires and then it like inside the barrel and then it fires so we are going to do that a few frames ahead of time um, but uh, actually yeah let's go ahead and do that first alright there's two ways you could do it you could go ahead and motion track this um, that's not really necessary the second way is just to do it by hand so let's go ahead and go to the UV image editor let's go ahead whoop, change it to viewer node that way it you see exactly what is being outputted from your node composite alright and then hit N on your keyboard and I'm going to change it from view mode to mask mode hit new mask and we're going to add a new layer to the mask by clicking the plus right here okay so 
I'm going to zoom in here. So basically, it's really simple. Hit Control, and for me, it is uh, right click. For you, it could be something a little bit different. I mean, it could be a uh, left click, depending on what you have your settings set as in the user preferences. All right, so hit Control C, and it's not necessary for be super smooth right here because we're doing a bunch of blurring and stuff inside of the compositor, so it is totally unnecessary to do any kind of a uh, uh, blur to the mask. All right, and this is good. Um, now, as you can see, there's that little white dot in the center of the mask. This is a new upgrade to Blender that makes this effect a whole lot easier to do and really all masking and rotoscoping a whole lot easier. It's a feature I love. It's the ability to select a bunch and scale them and rotate them. Yeah, so you can do all this now with inversion 2.73 that was not possible in older versions. If you try to hit scale or anything, it just wouldn't scale your mask. For, and they just now added that feature. It seems small, but it's really useful. Okay, so that is good. We're going to hit automatic keyframing. So go ahead and hit I to add a keyframe. Now just kind of go back, and since we got automatic keyframing on, we are automatically getting keyframes added. As you can see here, as indicated by those yellow marks. See, when I move over, there's no yellow mark, but then there, there is on that frame. All right, now, something I did that I think helped sell the effect a little bit is I randomly would rotate it, you know, scale it, scale it along the y-axis, you know. That way that there is a little bit of uh, a little bit more randomness and didn't look tracked onto there. So just go through, you know, five frames before or so um, and do that. So you can continue that. I'm not going to for sake of time within this tutorial. Okay, so there's the first frame where I'm actually firing. This is where I want the effect to actually happen. All right. You may also be wondering, real quick, you may be wondering, okay, so it's there in that frame, but how do I get it to not be there in that frame? Well, very simple. Just move it off screen. So for the rest of all this, you know, I mean, it's, it's right there still, but if we go to that frame, frame 96 in my case, it's right there, now it's not, there it is, now it's not. Okay, so the first frame where it's firing, let's go ahead and uh, zoom in, eh, we'll zoom out. Okay, I just basically need to be able to take uh, four of these points, so I can hit B for box select, and hit G to move, and there we go. All right, and I'm just going to position it about like that. As you can see, there you can see a little bit of a line where the uh, where the actual barrel size is um, inside of this blur. So I'm just kind of positioning it right there. All right, that looks good. And I'm rounding off the edges, as you can see, which is a whole lot easier to do inside of the mask editor than it was inside of the 3D viewport which is a big plus. As you can see, it's just so much easier working with masks instead of the 3D plane um, like done, like it was done in the uh, 3D uh, how to make a lightsaber inside a blender episode. So this is a whole lot easier than that. Okay, now we can go ahead and work with this and then we'll come back and do a little bit more inside of here. Alright, so First things first, we really just want to create that effect of the glow. All right, so go back to your node editor, and we're going to hit input, and we're going to add an RGB node. This allows you to just set the color. All right, I need just a flat red, bright red. Very nice. All right, so now I'm also going to add, under color, an alpha over node. A little tip for you, you can hit T, and it'll come up with this, ooh, they added tabs here. Okay, this is the first time I've opened it inside of 2.73, and I had mentioned, I think on an episode of Premiere Prep, how I wanted tabs here, because I didn't have them before, even though they had them in the 3D viewport. See, if you go to the 3D viewport, there's tabs here. Well, they didn't have tabs there before. Now they do. I'll be darned. That is awesome. I really wanted that, and they added it. 
But I still kind of like this menu. I know. I'm weird. Okay, so just plug in the RGBA into the bottom of this alpha overnode. We're also going to duplicate this alpha overnode by hitting Shift D. Going to add it there. And then we want the um, that color on top, so we're going to put it in the bottom. Because for some reason with alpha overnodes, if you put it on bottom, it's on top. A little weird, I know. Okay, but as you can see, it's all over this image. Okay, um, how on earth are we going to get it constrained just that little spot? Well, we hit Shift A, hit Input, and Mask. All right, so select Mask, and of course it could have a different name if you added that name, and there it is, but the background's white. How do we fix that? Well, this is very simple, and this is something that I was trying to think of how to do this effect using masks, and I'm like, oh, it just instantly hit me. Take down the alpha and make it all the way black. As you can see, it's added straight to the image. Yeah, pretty awesome. Oh, also, my video footage is not 1080p. thought it was. Uh, so it's 720p. All right, so I'll just render that and go to the node editor. And it's properly on there. See that? When it was 1080, uh, yeah, 1080p, the little effect was out here somewhere. I changed it to 720, and it's right where I wanted it. So that's a little bit. If you're troubleshooting a problem like that, just try checking your render resolution. Because a big problem, a lot oftentimes, is that'll be fit, set to 50%, and a lot of people just won't really realize it. So just change it up to 100, and there you go. Okay, so now to actually get that effect. All right, first I'm just going to move these nodes out of the way. All right, so we need them down here. Okay, so we're going to basically do it to uh, this way. We're going to branch it off into two different branches, really, and we're going to combine them together at the end. The two different branches will be the core of the actual blast, little thingy, the bullet, we'll call it the bullet, so the core will be down here, and up here will be the glow around the core. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Let's just go ahead and do the effect. All right, so using a hue saturation value node, we are going to take the color all the way down to white. And why would we do that? Why don't we just make this white? Because if that's white, we can have that as the core but we need a red glow on the outside. And if this is white, you cannot make it red using a hue saturation value node. I've tried, it does not work. So we need it to stay red here, um, but we're going to branch it off this way to make it um, white for the core. All right, just a little tip, white and black cannot have their colors changed using a hue saturation value node. Okay. So we are going to add a blur node under filter. I'm going to blur mine by six pixels on the x-axis and six pixels on the y-axis. So as you can see, it's just a little bit of a faint blur to get rid of some of that jaggedness it had. All right, so. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add another blur node and branch off our image going another direction. All right, and we're going to go ahead and combine these using an alpha over node. One on top, so we got to put that on bottom. Oh, sorry, reverse. Want that on bottom, so we need it on top. Okay, so as you can see, it's got a kind of an interesting red glow. Let's zoom in here. All right, you see that around the edge? Okay, so how do we actually get it to look like the final effect? Very, very simple. For me, in, for me and my shot, I just needed to blur it by 22 by 22. And that's almost essentially it. But we're going to fine tune a little bit. I'm going to go to color and add another hue saturation value node. And I'm going to duplicate that because we need it twice. 
um, I'm going to take the saturation and the value all the way up twice. All right, and as you can see, that's really bright. All right, so I actually, on the second one, I think I'll take it down just a little bit. Something about yeah, 2.67 or so. All right, and that looks good. All right, so let's scale that back down to 0.8 and move it right there. All right. So that's what makes up this effect, really. I mean, that's almost all the compositing needed, OK? And just experiment. You know, when you're doing this effect, you know, hit Convert Pre-Multiplied and see if it makes any difference for you. If it does and you want to keep it that way, go ahead. Like, for me personally, right now, I don't need it. But you might find it, you know, better. Just experiment. Take up saturation a little bit, you know. Make it kind of a slightly off-white, OK? You know, and you can change the hue, get a different color. I mean, look at that. You can make it green. So just experiment as you're doing this effect. All right, now, one of my favorite parts about this, <laughs> I really love it, is the ability to now use a mask and look. As we move the mask, we can see our effect. And that is just so awesome. I have, I have wanted to be able to do something like this for a long time and inside of Blender, and now I can. I mean, look at this. I can move it around and it elongates it. And, you know, I mean, this is what you're actually seeing with the final render. I mean, that's just amazing. I just love that. And I know I'm a geek in that kind of area, but yeah, I am loving this. Okay, so as you may have seen in the original effect, let me go ahead and show you this one here. Uh, yeah, let's make it 1.5. As you can see in the original effect, I have like these spokes around the edge. And how do I do that? Well, it's really quite simple and quite easy. Well, I, of course, if it's simple, it's quite easy, but um, fun to do actually. So add a new layer, and we're going to just hide the first layer so that we can just work individually with this one. All right, and we are going to start drawing these spokes. And see how you can see exactly what your effect is already? I know I'm going crazy over this, but I love that. All right, so start adding your spokes. Whoops. Don't need that one. And then Alt C to close it off. All right, so if we hide this, you can see that's that's it. All right, now of course it's not like my original. This is of course just tutorial, so I'm not trying to be as precise. Um, but you can make yours look a lot better. Um, this doesn't look too too bad. All right, and I only used it for. Actually, I think I only used it for one frame. No, two frames, sorry. For the frame right before I fire and the frame that I fire. Or like like it's charging up, okay? So let's go ahead and see what we're doing. All right, whoop. And we'll select everything by hitting A, maybe A twice. All right, and we can, of course, uh, move some of these spokes around to give it a little bit more of a naturally happening feeling. So otherwise, if it's just moving around, I mean, it looks like it's animated by a computer. All right, so that's pretty cool. All right, and so you can see that original mask is in the center of the thing. All right, so let's just go to the next frame. And we don't want those spokes there. So select it all and move it off frame. Then if we go to the next frame, See they're there? Now they're not, just because it's moving off frame. See that? OK, now that frame, we don't need any spokes again. So we'll just, first we need to add a keyframe here, because we want them to stay there. All right, so come here and move them off frame. OK, 
and I'm cycling through frames by using the left and right arrow keys on my keyboard. All right, so now the effect, and now the actual blast, we can just, you know, animate going across the screen. Nope, we don't want that. All right, so G, something about there. Actually, let's move it back right there. And then G again, just slightly in frame. All right, and then the last frame, we will move it completely out. And that's it. I mean, you really are pretty much done. But there is one more thing that I did um, that you could do to really help sell the effect a little bit more. OK, let's go back to the node editor. And I will add a, under filter, a directional blur node. All right, what does this allow you to do? Well, as you probably guessed, it allows you to blur in a direction. OK? But let's go to the frame before we actually want it and hit um, I across the zoom, all right, and iterations. Because the next frame, we are going to want to change these values, but we don't want them changed on the frames before it. So let's just um, go ahead and go to the frame that we actually want it to happen on. And yes, that is it. OK, we're going to zoom, I believe it was by 0.1. No, 0 0.02, I believe it was, something like that, 0 0.03, uh, 0.025. Yes, that works for my scene. All right, and iterations, we're going to make it finer. Now, as you can see, we have automatic keyframing on, so whenever we make a change, we don't have to hit I anymore. All right, and. Uh, two iterations is plenty. All right, so as you can see, it's a little bit finer with two than instead of one. See, there is one, there is two. Well, let me just zoom in if you're having a hard time seeing that. One point, ooh, nope, five. All right, so there it is at two. Change it to one. See how it kind of uh, doesn't look as good? Change it to two, it's a little bit finer little bit better. All right. OK, so that is pretty much it. Now, after you want the directional blur to stop, which you really don't need it here because it's going out of frame. Yeah, so that's it. I mean, that's all there is to creating this. Now, let me, before we stop here, I want to show you exactly what makes this up so so that you have a better understanding of how node based compositing works and how this scene is made okay watch it starts out with the original video footage we'll make it almost like a little story the video footage well it was lonely and it wanted a friend so it got together with an alpha over node and a red node. OK, the story's not quite working. But so as you can see here, the red is completely overlaid. All right, well, in order to change this, we then add a mask. And by changing the top value, the top alpha value of this uh, alpha over node and changing it all the way to black, this color, as you can see here. So when we change it up, it you know doesn't work. Change it to black, and it works perfectly. All right, so whoops. All right, so now that those are combined, let's go to a frame where you actually can see something. All right, so there's a good frame. So now that those frames are combined with the mask. We then split it off and gave it a core. Then after we gave it a core, we gave it a glow from this top area here. All of it was combined by use of an alpha over node. Now, after the alpha over node, we wanted a little bit of a blur because there's movement having, happening here. And we could use some kind of motion blur, but not really in the mask editor. So we need to add it manually. 
by using a directional blur node. By doing that, we get that, but only on the frames that we want. So as you can see here, there's absolutely no directional blur, but on this frame, there is, and this frame, and that frame, and that's it. Okay, so that is creating an alien blaster effect inside of Blender. As you can see, it is a whole lot easier than the original How to Make a Lightsaber in Blender, which was actually Premiere Prep Episode 1. So you can uh, find it by clicking right there. And yeah, it was Episode 1, and you can definitely tell. I've improved a lot since then, I hope. I think. Okay, so that pretty much concludes this episode. I know that it has been a little while since an upload, a month almost to be precise. And don't worry, January was really busy for me, so my schedule was pretty full, but it's really opened up a lot now, so Premiere Prep will come back to its awesome Premiere Preppy glory. Okay, and also I've got a lot of uh, plans to improve Premiere Prep and really FilmWorld as a whole. A few of those improvements were implemented into this episode, um, but in the future episodes there will definitely be a lot more improvements, so keep an eye out for those. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to go and check out the Google Plus community, to check out, to check out the Google Plus page, and to subscribe to FilmWorld, like this video, and comment down below. Thank you very much for watching. I'm your host, Micah Pendleton. Remember, dream big, pay small. I'll catch you next time.